army's wasted time for them like me. Give me a time. Abolista, your command. To reason why. Company! Forward march! of smoke bites at me eyes. Strays have set something else ablaze, I wager. Eve's ear suddenly caught brisk music and voices raised in song. She had no doubt. A wedding ceremony had just begun in a hamlet just off the high road. When the bride's father spotted the royal retinue, he rushed up to beg the queen to bless the newlyweds. Meave obliged cordially. Encouraged, the father boldly invited Meave and her court to join in the festivities. You do us a right honor, my lady. And your men would bolster the strength of fort to march ahead. We beg ye, eat, drink and rejoice with us. I haven't slippers to dance in, but I trust I'll manage somehow. Lead on, good man. The nuptials took place in the shade of a vast oak tree. Then the newlyweds and their guests walked in procession to a barn adorned with flowers. An uproarious celebration ensued. As she watched her soldiers dance shoulder to shoulder with peasants, Me felt a surge of pride at being their queen, the heart of Lyria. It beat most powerfully here, not in the gilded halls of palaces. Suddenly a cry went up as strange armed men rushed into the yard. There's the lass! Grab her! Before anyone could stop them, the bandits took the bride and fled into the woods. The drums and fiddles, suddenly silenced, 
were now replaced by weeping, moaning, angry calls for pursuit. Deep grief upon his face, the host turned to Meave with a plea. Milady, we beg of you, help us! We'll not leave you wanting, good man, shouted the queen, slipping her feet into her stirrups. Follow me! Yeah! The earth trembled beneath the weight of horse and hoof. Tankards laid out for a midnight toast to the bride and groom clinked prematurely in the quake, and the Lyrians charged forth into the dark wood. again, heart bursting with love. Good folk, the Queen's returned. Welcome her we must, tribute in hand. Ah, <laughs> ah Queen, why pretty as a painting she is. Though the Lyrian cavalrymen had imbibed spirits throughout the night, they not only managed to stay upright in their saddles, but even gained on the bandits and cut off any chance of escape. smell a leak. The 
Quickly! We must stop them! Left, right, left, right. You mad? Don't shake that! Ours is not to reason why. One vote. to your command. Rabbit the white of an eye from our full eagle way. I'm a monster. Neve's troops defeated the bandits and rescued the bride. Only to be surprised, for the maiden fair dropped to her knees and burst into tears of sorrow, not joy. Weep not, child, the queen said, placing her arm upon her shoulder. It's over. You're free. Nay, not so, your majesty. My lady, I've no love for Jan, no wish to wed him. It's my father. My family forced me. My heart's fimbers. He arranged the masquerade. I beg ye, if you've one ounce of kindness, if you've a heart, let us leave this place together and free. This scheme you've pursued, I can't condone. Folk have been wounded. Some might have died, said the Queen. Yet, equally, I cannot let others force you to marry. So, may we go, Your Grace? You may. Fast as your legs will carry you, afore I have a change of heart. Though none dared utter a word of chagrin, Meave sensed her subjects' bitter gazes upon her. At the first light of the morn she left, without so much as a nod goodbye.
Worked in a mess once that served no meat, not even sausage. <laughs> Weren't long before the men rioted. Yes, Your Grace? It's time I attended to other matters. By that column of smoke. God damn it! Make haste! As the Clayton estate appeared from behind a tree line, the Queen and all in her retinue knew at once they had arrived too late. A veritable swarm of bandits milled about the yard. Who have we here? I'll take a gander, lads. The Queen herself is deign to come and see us. See you? Then kill you. The strays of Sparla. Tis you who lead them. Tis you they call the Duke of Dogs. Aye, tis I they dub so. And in other pleasant ways. Prince of Pariahs, Thane of Thieves, Baron of Brigands, and Marquess of Mendacity. Colourful titles all. Yet you omit one. Come on, cutthroat! I beg your pardon and cry foul. I am anything but common. You needn't get excited, Caldwell. Where is Lord Clayton? Sadly, my lord's no longer with us. Turned us away, you see. Denied us hospitality. A sacred rite, after all. Angered the gods mightily, I expect, as he promptly met a tragic end. Fell in the well and broke his neck. I've heard enough. Two arms! Attack! We throw this queen a ball. We'll catch them all.
What's... Yeah, yeah! Give me a time. We'll catch them all! You can try to win them all, but you won't. Well, well. My congratulations. Hmm. Hmm. Watch your heads. <laughs> Stand back. <coughs> this is some alchemical concoction. There's a time to reap, a time to sow. Listen, your command. Hmm. Go, pop, pop. We got a job to do. Army's a waste of time for you like me. <laughs> the chase is on! I'm a monster. I taught you some respect! Bravo, your grace. Well played. I can't say the same for you, I fear. You'd have done better to die in battle. Bound for Lyria now, where the hangman will have his way with you. Splendid! I've ever wished to see the capital. Quite certain of yourself, you seem. Many a four you have braided nooses for me, Your Grace. Yet as you see, my neck's straight as a pike. My threats are never hollow. And if it's an escape you way, well, we've yet to see any man abscond from the dungeons of Lyria Castle. I'd hope so. 
for to be known as second just wouldn't be worth the trouble. Ugh. Take him away. As soldiers placed the Duke of Dogs in shackles, there was a sudden commotion. A messenger rushed in, sweaty, gasping for air, smelling of smoke and blood. His gaze spoke terror. Your Majesty, Graces, Nilfgaard's crossed the Yoruga. Black-clad hordes, villages burn, folk lie murdered. Nilfgaard, gods help us. They march for Dravagrad. Prince Willem, he can't hope to arrive in time with aid. Help us, you must. Dravagrad, blast it all. Listen close, soldier. You're to take a fresh mount, ride hard back to your commander and say the Queen comes to repel the foe. Your Grace, begging your pardon, our force. We aren't many. Let's send for reinforcements first, elsewise. Reynard, I've seen Nilfgaard's trebuchets at work. Should we delay until we're stronger, they'll leave no stone standing in Dravagrad. We must ride for the town at once. As her men prepared to march, Meave climbed the manor's tower. Smoke rose in columns in the distance. As more black pillars appeared one after the other, she knew they meant another home, another barn, another mill was in flames. Tears welled in her eyes, yet they were tears of anger. Bastards. If it's war they seek, it's war I shall bring them. Reynard, prepare to ride! First bandits, now this. Misfortune does indeed come knocking twice. Hmm. In hobnail boots, tramping upon my land. Nilfgaard shall regret this. I swear on all that is sacred and blessed. Suddenly, Meave's force found itself marching straight towards a Nilfgaardian company. To the Queen's surprise, the invaders did not immediately assume battle formation. They proceeded instead in her very direction without a sign of panic. The man leading the Nilfgaardians was clad in rich robes. He exuded pride and the scent of musk. I am Traherne Vardifir, Your Majesty. I was asked to present to your esteemed grace the ultimatum of the forces of the Empire of Nilfgaard. The envoy cracked the seal on a scroll, unfurled it, took a deep breath, and began to read. I, General Ardal Ebdahi, demand the immediate and unconditional surrender of Lyria and Rivia. Elsewise, I will burn down every city, town, village, and temple place all your subjects in chains, and your armed men, defeated and captured, I will hang along the roadsides as a warning to all others in the barbarous north. As the final threat echoed in Meave's ears, the envoy put away the scroll and stood waiting for her answer, a mocking smile on his face. 
He allowed himself this insolence, believing the immunity accorded diplomats would shield him from any form of royal ire. His Excellency speaks true. We Nordlings are barbarians, without exception, answered the Queen. Though her voice was calm, most of those listening shuddered inside. We neither hold nor honor the standards of the civilized world, among them the immunity of envoys. At the... Majesty, you must stop this! shall bring us victory! The envoy's escort crumbled beneath the onslaught of Meave's Lyrians, who grabbed the emissary and brought him before their queen. Robes torn and head blooded, he no longer exuded imperial pride. Your Grace, what would you have us do with this pompous ass? Kill him, then take his head, drop it in a jug of honey, and deliver it to General Epdahi with my compliments. The envoy objected, 
protested, pleaded, cited pacts and conventions, even went so far as to call on common human decency. Meave was deaf to all. Then one day, gazing towards the horizon, the Queen spotted Lyrian banners whipping about in the wind. At long last, she said with a smile. Meave resolved to speak with the commander, one Baronet Eldar. It was the first time they met, and the youth very much impressed her. Yet instead of questioning Eldar about the foe's troop movements, Reynard took the conversation down a seemingly irrelevant path. And how's your father, if I may ask? In good health, I hope. Yes, though he still nurses that bump he suffered while hunting last winter. Yet he's not one to complain. I'll tell him you asked. Irritated at the trivial nature of the conversation, Meave gave her horse a dose of her reins and cantered off. Once Eldar and his men were safely behind them, she took Reynard aside. Reynard, this is no time for gossip and pleasantries. We are at war. Yes, Your Majesty. And in such times, little should be taken at face value. Even a man's name. Get to the point, Reynard. Eldar's father died a month past. His son, I venture, should have known as much. But that means... Oh, the bastard. Impeccable accent, though. I fear he's rather representative of what we face. Your guardian spies are ever well prepared. Tell me, how did you know? He wears no mourning on his armor. We're not for that. I dare say I might never have guessed. What are your orders, Your Grace? To observe these Nilfgaardian mummers? Assemble a force. Tell them to follow our new allies. Observe them closely. As you wish, Your Grace. Reynard scouts did as ordered watching the false Lyrians while themselves remaining unseen. Soon after, a scout returned with news that the false Lyrians seemed headed for Rastberg, a castle several leagues to the north. <laughs> <laughs> 